what happens to every person I know that makes a lot of money really fast is they equate their self-worth with their net worth. How have we evolved as a person through all of these trials and tribulations that you've faced? I love that question. I'm excited to answer that question. I think I'm kinder. I know that doesn't sound like some earth shattering thing. I know that I'm less egocentric. I know that I'm kinder. I'm infinitely more patient. And I think I have better perspective. Like as a 55 year old to be able to say, I'm still learning how to grow up. I'm still learning how to grow up. The problem with what I did, and this is true for every person I know that accumulates wealth fast, right? I was a shoe salesman in 2001. I was on a hospital bed in 2002. And by 2003, I'd made my first million. By 2005, I was 10, 12, 15 million. By 2006, I had 56 million under management and control. What happens to every person I know that makes a lot of money really fast is they equate their self-worth with their net worth. And they, 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 they're arrogant. They're too damn cocky for their own good. They make stupid decisions. Yeah. How am I better now? I think I'm, I have more perspective and I, I think I, I try to be kinder to people. And more. That's amazing. Yeah. I think the biggest personal growth or, you know, even professional growth actually occurs from failures. You know, we, we always cheer for success and we always laud people who succeeded in life. Right. But I think it's important to look at the failures that they've had in their lives prior to their success. Right. They've had challenges in their lives, especially in this age of social media. It's so easy to see somebody succeeding and you feel like this just happened out of the blue. But there's so much of trial, trial and error, so much of hard work that goes be, that happens behind the scenes that has actually led to the success that they are now. What are what are some of the things that you would want you know our listeners to kind of take back home, especially in their investment journey with respect to real estate or with respect to anything that they do, anything that they invest in in their lives? It depends on where you are in the journey, right? If you're still buying your first fourplex and you're 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 new in that journey i say take bigger risks i know that sounds weird coming from me but if you're new in your real estate journey take calculated risks that you wouldn't normally take if you're further along more middle ground and 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 you've perfected a good business model 300 400, 500 single family res, and you perfected that system, keep doing that. Don't get distracted by the shiny bobble, right? That was, that was a big, and if you're further on your journey, take chips off the table. When I went through that period of divorce, I could have taken $10 million off the table and not had two seconds worth of doubt, but because of my ego, I didn't. And now I'm struggling. At 55, I'm just now getting back into the real estate world and I'm working 10 times harder than I need to had I taken chips off the table. Right. But what's getting you to get back to real estate after all of this? I want to retire. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I, I'm, I think I'm ready now, right? It took me, I needed to recover. I needed to get kind of, I needed to get peace of mind mentally. But now that I have that, I want my wife to retire. I want to retire. I want to live. I was making a million dollars a month, right? I historically have made a thousand dollars an hour. Like I've got proof of that throughout my entire career. And I would like to do that again. I, what I want, when I talk about chips on the table, I want $10 million cash in the bank and I'm done. That is my number. Everybody should have a number. God, I wish I had known that when I was a, a kid. If I had just, <laughs> ah, if I had just known to have a number and say, this is what I need to, to be done. Had I, had I just had that little bit of advice. 
I wouldn't be working now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I could have I retired at 40 years old and been on some beach for the last 20 years. Like, that's hard to take. Well, I think for me, retirement has a different conversation, but I think that's a topic for a, a different day, a different discussion, because the way I, I look at retirement is not not just sitting on the beach. Honestly, I would just get bored of it. I, I, I sure cannot. I'd probably end up finding a way to sell coconuts, but... Uh, <laughs> You'll probably open up a cool head stand on the beach. <laughs> There's a difference between retire, like having to work and wanting to work. Right now, I'm in this new phase of having to work again. And right. like, I want to work, but right now I freaking have to. And that pisses me off. <laughs> <laughs> because if I had just taken my own advice 15 years ago, this would be a def- different story. Uh Amazing. Well, well, at least at least you know now what to do, or maybe somewhat, right? <laughs> you know, somewhat also have some idea of where to go and how to how to forge your path forward. The thing that I'm really happy about, honestly, I know the blueprint. I know how to build a big company. I know how to do it fast. And up until making one bad decision with Lehman Brothers. I had a very successful, strong business. Right. I, so I think I can. I think I can get my ten million in probably two years. I don't think it's going to take wow. more than two years. Amazing. Yeah, I'm pretty confident that I can. I can net somewhere close to between seven and ten million in in two years. That's amazing. My, that's my goal right now. Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> You got to set big goals because if you don't set those goals, you'll never hit the goals. That's the way it is, right? You got to set the goals. It's such a team sport now, right? right. Real estate used to be pretty solo, right? You get one guy do, who claims to do all of the, you, I mean, you have thousands of other people working with you, but you always have this idea of the, the real estate mogul. And I'd love to break that idea. I'd love to say, look, the reality is real estate works best. The real estate investing world works best when you've got a community. Right, right. This is I a- like that because what? that's what we're actually, the way we're w- working is also in a way that we have like multiple parties involved. And I think it's it speaks to the fact that one person cannot be an expert in everything. Yeah. Not possible. You have to find your lane and stick to your lane. Do what you know best, and then let the others do stuff with you and trust each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that that would be a nice. I I think there's a lot shifting in the market now. Building that trust and building those relationships used to be a decade in the process to build. Like my my real estate partner, right? I've no my my realtor Jim. I've known him for 10 or 12 years now, right? Now, with the advent of tech, like you and I would normally never meet, right? You're right. a 1,000, 1,500 miles away. We are not in the same circles typically. Like I love the connectivity of the world right now. This, I love yeah. that. Uh, because you and I have become friends, right? You and I have- Yeah, gone. absolutely. Beyond this, this podcast, like we've become friends. And I like right. that because it is it is about a community. Yeah. Well, John, how can people find you if they want to, you know, sort of work with you or maybe uh, get to know what you're up to in your life and how you're, you know, mitigating risk in your ventures? How can they get in touch with you? John at, and my website is ratracerescue.net. John at ratracerescue.net. Super cheesy, just like me. Like, that's... That's never going to change. <laughs> uh, we are always raising for capital, right? We've always got, I've got four deals. They're all small deals, but they're all, we're always raising for capital. We try to work with non-accredited investors for the most part, because if you got $25 million in the bank, you probably don't need to invest with us. <laughs> but my, my, my friends and family are all teachers and military. So yeah, <laughs> I, I try to work with unaccredited investors pretty pretty regularly. Very cool, very cool. And this was a fun conversation, John. Thank you so much for joining me. And uh, folks, I hope you enjoyed uh, our show with uh, John. Again, thank you so much for joining me and we'll see you on the next episode.
Thank you. Really appreciate it. All right, guys, if you haven't done already, please go check out my free video series on how to do due diligence on operators and on deals before investing in them. It's called Real Estate Rx for Passive Investors, and it's available at www.rerxcourse.com.